Yeah, 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 yeah. Because I'm happy. I'm a Muslim, that's what makes me happy, and that's the truth. And it's mentioned in Surah Araf, chapter number 7, verse number 157. It says that they follow the unlettered prophet who is mentioned in the law and gospels, mentioned in the scriptures. Here it says that the prophet would be unlettered, illiterate. And we find that there are several prophecies of Prophet Muhammad in the Old Testament as well as the New Testament several times mentioned in the Bible. And it's clearly mentioned in the book of Isaiah, chapter number 29, verse number 12, that the book will be given to thee who is not learned. And when it will be said to him, pray, read this, he will say, I am not learned. And this is exactly what happened when the first revelation, Wahi, came to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and when Archangel Gabriel said, Ikra, read, he replied, Ma na biqari, I am not learned. So surely, the Prophet, being an illiterate, could not have copied from somewhere else. History tells us today that the first Arabic version of the Bible, the Arabic version, translation of the Bible did not exist when the prophet was alive. The first version of the Old Testament was written by R. Sadion Gyos in 900 CE, about more than 250 years after the death of the prophet. And the first Arabic New Testament was written or translated by Erpenius in the year 1616, about 1,000 years after the demise of the prophet. So where is the question of the prophet coming from the Bible? There are many people who say that the prophet knows Billah. He copied the Quran from the Bible. And we do agree that there are similarities between the Bible and the Quran. Now, just because there is similarities between the Bible and the Quran, that does not mean the Quran has been copied from the Bible. There is a possibility that both of them have a common source. And we know that the source of all the revelations was one true Almighty God. Suppose a student A, in the examination, he copies from the textbook of science. And student B also copies from the textbook of science. That does not mean B has copied from A or A has copied from B. Both copied from the original source, the textbook of science. Similarly, the source of all the revelations, it is Almighty God. And furthermore, if anyone copies from someone, he will never write the name of the person who he has copied from. The Quran gives due respect to Prophet Jesus, peace be upon him. If he had copied from the Bible, why should he give respect to Jesus, peace be upon him? If a person copies from his neighbor, he will not mention that my neighbor is a good person or my neighbor is very intelligent in science. So if the Prophet copied from the Bible, why does he give due respect to Moses, Jesus, peace be upon him, and all the prophets? If we say that the Quran has been copied from the Bible because there are common points, then we can say that Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, knows Billah. He has copied from the Old Testament because there are similarities between the Old and the New Testament. We know that the similarities are because both have a common source that is one Almighty God. We come to know that in Islam, there are four revelations. The Torah, the Zabur, the Injil, and the Quran. The Torah is the Wahid, the revelation which was given to Moses, peace be upon him. The Zabur is the Wahid, the revelation given to David, peace be upon him. Injil is the Wahid, the revelation given to Prophet Jesus, peace be upon him. And the Quran is the last and final revelation which was given to the last and final messenger, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Even though all the revelations, all the scriptures that came before the Quran, they have not maintained the pure form. They have been corrupted. They have been changed. Yet, there are many parts of the scriptures which yet are the same. So if you have to check what is correct, you have to check with the Furqan, that is the glorious Quran. If it matches the Quran, we have no problem in accepting that portion of that scripture to be the word of God. There may be many human beings who may not be knowing or having a knowledge of the Quran or the Bible. So how can we decipher which of the two is right? Or who has copied from whom? 
The best test is the test of science. If we put these two scriptures to the test of science, we will know the difference of chalk and cheese. When we read superficially, we come to know that the Bible and the Quran are the same. But if we do a research or we analyze it, we come to know that the difference of chalk and cheese. When we read the Bible, it's mentioned in the first book of the Bible, book of Genesis, chapter number one, that Almighty God, He created the heaven and the earth in six days. And these six days are 24 hours days, mentioned in the Bible. The Quran, too, speaks about the creation of the universe and says, Almighty God has created the heaven and the earth in six ayams. Ayam is plural of yom. One of the meaning of yom is a 24-hour day, but the other Arabic meaning of yom is a long period, an epoch. Today, scientists, they say that our universe was created in billions of years. So to say it was created in six 24-hour days is wrong. But the scientists have got no objection with the Quran when the Quran says the heavens and the earth were created in six ayams. That is, six long periods, without defining them to be strict 24 hours. Furthermore, it's mentioned in the Bible, in the first book, book of Genesis, chapter number one, verse number three to five, that Almighty God, He created the day and the night on the first day. And He created the light on the first day. It later says in Genesis chapter number one, verse 14 to 19, the source of light, that is, the stars and the sun, they were created on the fourth day. Imagine, the effect is created on the first day and the cause of the effect on the fourth day. The sun was created and the stars on the fourth day and the light from the sun and the star was created on the first day. It's illogical. How can the effect come before the source? Quran 2 speaks about the creation of the heavens and the earth but does not give this unscientific sequence. Furthermore, it's mentioned in the first book of the Bible, book of Genesis, chapter number one, verse number nine to 13, that the earth was created on the third day. And Genesis chapter number one, verse number 14 to 19, that the sun and the moon was created on the fourth day. We know from science that the earth and the moon are the part of the parent body that is the sun. So to say that the earth was created before the parent body of the sun is unscientific. The Quran too speaks about creation of the heavens, the sun, the moon, and the earth, but it says it was created simultaneously. Imagine Prophet Muhammad copied from the Bible and he changed the sequence. He says, no, both were created together. Bible further says in the book of Genesis chapter number one, verse number nine to 13, that Almighty God created the vegetables and the vegetations on the third day. And Genesis chapter number one, Verse 14 to 19, he created the sun on the fourth day. Scientifically, it's not possible that the vegetation can survive without sunlight. It's totally unscientific. Furthermore, the Bible says in Genesis chapter number one, verse number 16, that Almighty God created two great lights. The greater light, the sun, to rule the day, and the lesser light, the moon, to rule the night. The Bible says the light of the sun as well as the light of the moon is its own light. The Bible says the light of the moon has its own light. But the Quran says in Surah Furqan, chapter number 25, verse number 61, the light of the moon is not its own light, it's a reflected light. So imagine the prophet copied from the Bible and he made corrections. Not the own light, it is a reflected light. It's not humanly possible. Only one who has this knowledge is Almighty God. There are several examples. We can give a talk only on this. And I had a debate with Dr. William Campbell on the topic, the Quran and the Bible in the light of science. And there, I've mentioned many unscientific points mentioned in the Bible. Time does not permit me to go into details. The various unscientific things mentioned in the Bible, which is not mentioned in the Quran. For example, according to the Bible, Adam, peace be upon him. He came into existence about 5,800 years before. 
Science tells us that the human beings came into existence millions of years before. The Quran too speaks about Adam and Salam, but does not give a date. The Bible says in Genesis, chapter number 6, 7, as well as 8, about Noah and the flood. And it says that the full world was submerged underwater. At the time of Noah, that is approximately 21st, 22nd century BC. Quran too speaks about Noah as Salam. But it does not give it a date. It even speaks about the flood. But it says it was a localized flood. Only it flooded the Ummah, the people of Noah, Salam, not the full world. Today, archaeological evidence shows us that the 11th dynasty of Egypt, as well as the 3rd dynasty of Babylon, they existed without interruption since the 21st, 22nd century BC. So archaeological evidence says that what is mentioned in the Bible is totally wrong. There are various examples, we can give hundreds, time does not permit. So surely, this Quran has not been copied from the Bible. Neither it has been forged. As mentioned in the Quran in Surah Sajda, chapter number 32, verse number 1 and 2, it says that, do they say he forged it? Nay, it is the truth from the Lord. So that he may give admonition to the people to whom no warner has come in the past. So surely, we can undoubtedly say that neither Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon the author of the Quran, neither did he copy or plagiarize or learn it from any other source. Furthermore, we know that the glorious Quran, unlike other religious scriptures, or unlike other story books which are written by human beings, it has a particular beginning. Once upon a time, foxes and the grapes, once upon a time, lamp and the wolf, that the Bible says, in the beginning was God. In the beginning was the word. Typical. And every storybook will have a sequence. Sequence, you know, a beginning and an end. In a serial order. But the Quran is unique. The first verse to reveal of the Quran, Iqra, is not the first chapter, chapter number one. It is chapter 96, Surah Iqra, Surah Allah, verse number one. It doesn't have a sequence. It does not start with Adam alayhi salam, and then it continues and goes to Noah alayhi salam, and Musa alayhi salam, then Jesus peace be upon him, then Muhammad peace be upon him. No. It has a unique sequence. It does not work like a human mind. Because the author is not a human being. Furthermore, there are unknown things mentioned in the Quran. Along with it, there's a challenge saying that you do not know it. For example, it's mentioned in the Quran, in Surah Hud, chapter number 11, verse 49, saying that you did not know this before, neither the people amongst you knew it. It gives an information and says, Oh, Prophet, you did not know it, not even your people knew it. It's mentioned in Surah Yusuf, chapter number 12. Verse number two, that none amongst you knew it, neither the Prophet knew it. Imagine the Prophet saying, when the Quran was revealed in Arabia, he's telling to the Arabs, neither I knew it, neither you did not know it. Any Arab could have got up, he could have said that I'm an Arab and I know this answer. This I knew it before. The Quran mentioned many incidences, many things about Lulqanen, about the story of the caves, many information, and says you did not know. Which human being who can write this book and say you did not know it before? Indicating this does not have a human origin. We would saw beautiful things by this man. Prophet Muhammad, may peace be upon him. He taught us to love and to care for each other. That is the sunnah of the chosen one Loving for your brother what you love for yourself is so true